Did you know you could actually use stock images to create awesome typography for your book cover or design projects? I didn't actually know it was news to me, but I figured out a couple of things and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create awesome typography just like what you see in the thumbnail. Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samid. I'm a pro book cover artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art, and advanced Photoshop techniques. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out free new videos every week. It's free, easy, and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So this trick I found literally purely by accident. I was looking for some things on Adobe Stock and I saw these really awesome uh, typography kind of alphabet layouts. And I thought, ah, oh, I'm not familiar with some of these typefaces. I, I don't think, I'm not sure if they're available as downloadable fonts. But when you're creating titles or book covers or design projects, you only need a couple of letters. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take these stock images and use them for a design project and create awesome type, just like the title says. So what you start off with, um, these are usually um, .ai files, they're vector files. So you have to open it. I go right click, open with Photoshop, and then you choose the dimensions. Now your dimensions need to be quite large if you want to use these for print projects. So for this particular image, I opened it up at 200 centimeters. I'm in Europe, so we use centimeters. Uh, you can find out the equivalent for whatever country you're in. So what we want to do is get rid of the blacks and leave only the white text. So I'm going to hide that layer and I'm just gonna fill the background, um, I'm gonna create a dedicated layer filled with black. The way that I filled that was select all, command and A, and then fill with foreground color, that is alt and delete. So we have a plain black background there. What I may do, this isn't essential, but I just like to work like this. I have an action for a radial gradient there, so the white type will appear nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate that. Now, the methods that I've been using recently for knocking out blacks, instead of using things like select color range or uh, magic wand tool or anything like that, um, I've been using the blend if function. So if you right click on the layer and go blending options, and then go to this layer style here, this section down here is blend if, this is really, really handy. You can hold down the alt, and drag and slide and you can see I've done that with the black slider there to knock out those whites so I'm just going to push that to the right now what we want to do is make sure command and plus to zoom in we don't want those edges to get too crispy so if I go too far to the right there's there's a risk that they become too crispy and if you don't go far enough to the right then it, it leaves some white artifacts so I'm going to give it a go there and then see what happens. So just gonna hide and show that. It's looking pretty good. Now, my way that I like to kind of rasterize or enable that layer style is to create a blank layer uh, below and then simply merge that down, Command and E. And then what we should be left with is just a typography, fairly sharp, it's not perfect. But you've got just the letters there. Now what we want to do is we want to isolate all of these letters. So I'm going to get rid of that big title there because we don't need it. Um, I'm going to hit V, move that to the center a bit. Okay, so what we want to do is isolate each one of these letters so it'll be straightforward for us to use these in a design project the way that i'm going to do that is i'm just going to duplicate this layer 26 times um so i'm just going to go command and then press j and an additional 25 times so here we go so that's that done right i'm going to hide these layers 
So this may seem a bit convoluted or long-winded, but once you've done this, you've got this character set to use for whatever projects you want to use this for. And it, I think it's quite handy because a lot of those typefaces uh, were seems quite unique that I, I don't see that often. So we've got just one layer active. This is the layer at the bottom of the stack. Okay, um, I'm gonna hit the marquee tool, M. I'm gonna draw a square around that A and I'm gonna select inverse. And the way you do that is Shift, Command and I and then hit Delete. And what we should be left with is just the A. I'm gonna name that layer A. Hide that one and we're gonna repeat the process. So I'm gonna draw a square around a selection around that B, Shift, Command, I, hit Delete and we're left with a B. I'm gonna name that layer B. So anytime I need a B, I'll just bounce onto that layer and use that. And we're going to go through and we're going to repeat this process for every single one of them. So let's use a bit of time-lapse magic and get that done. Okay, bish bash bosh, easy does it. That only took a couple of minutes, but the hard work is done now. Um, all of these letters are now on an individual layer and if I wanted to construct a word or title, I could easily put that together um, by duplicating these letters. Uh, something handy at this stage that you can do is hit V and on the move tool at the top left here on the option, select auto select. So I'm going to write the word awesome. Now, because auto select is active, I could click on any one of these and duplicate it as I need. So I'm going to select the A and I'm going to go Command J and move that. And you can see the A copy there. Um, I'm just going to move that up there. Now, I'm not putting these guys into a layer group because um, if these elements are in a layer group, you can't use auto select. It will just select the whole group. So we've got the A. I'm going to go for the W now, Command J that and bring that up next to this guy. So I'm keeping all of those copies up there so I know they're separate from the main alphabet. I'm gonna go for E and bring that up there. Move that. And then repeat that process for the S, O, M and E. So here we go. Okay, so we have our jaggedy looking awesome type here at the um, up top left let's zoom in a couple and see what's going on okay so we've got awesome here of course this isn't aligned a very fast thing you can do is have either the top or the bottom layer active hold down shift click so the entire word is selected and then with the move tool active you can align to the bottom so every single one of them will be aligned to the bottom I'm just going to drag a guide off this ruler to see if we're on track there so you see some descends a little bit more than others at any at any point because we've got the auto select on the move tool we could just click on it so I'm just gonna get the bottom of every letter to just be on that guide so it's kind of aligned it's better than it was before the first kind of aligned to bottom got them all roughly in the same area and now i'm going to hide that guide go command h i'm going to click on each individual letter and just position it i want a nice little bit of breathing room between each one so i believe the horizontal spacing in typography is called tracking and the vertical spacing between rows is called leading so I'm just a manually amending the track in here because these are pixel based letters. I'm just treating these as if there was each an independent layer. So we've got our awesome type there. I'm going to hold down shift and click and select all of them and go command and G and put all of that in a group together and call that awesome. So what can you do with this type? Well, you can mess about, edit and amend in the usual way because it's a layer with pixel information. But what I'm actually gonna do is show you how I do my book cover titles now. And that is using actions. 
so previously I kind of done everything manual and by hand and I always wondered how the other guys did they really I thought everybody did it the same way as me but it turns out people were purchasing these type actions and this is one from a bundle that I really really like I can't remember the name of the author but I will put a link to these type actions uh, below in this description but the premise is simple uh, you, it gives you a demo file it's a PSD document and one of these layers it says your text here double click the layer thumbnail so I'm going to double click that layer thumbnail and then it gives you um, the information that's going to be processed so just the pixel information so I'm going to remove everything that's in there but before I do that it won't let me delete that last layer because it'll be completely empty so I put our type in there command and I to invert and now it will allow me to delete the other one I'm gonna command T to free transform and I'm just gonna scale this up so it fits nicely in there so I'm gonna go enter there got that Okie dokie, now I'm happy with the positioning, I'm going to click the X and I'm going to go save. It took me a couple of goes to figure this out because I'd never really worked with these types of files before. But the amount of time and effort that it saved me doing um, f like fancy typography effects of book covers is massive. I, I really wish I'd got onto this a lot, lot earlier. So I'm just going to get rid of all the other stuff that I don't need. Uh, the kind of demo effects. I'm going to create a new layer. Command A, Alt and Delete to fill that with black. And there you can see the awesome typography for this project created using a stock image. Now, all of those different stock images on the Adobe Stock website. I'm not entirely sure if these are av available as stocks or whether they're just one-off showcases, but I, I do find it quite interesting, and a lot of these are, are really nice looking. So this is a process I'm going to be using for my own design projects, and I hope that you found it useful. If you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, because that lets me know that you enjoy this kind of video. So that's it for today, team. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know I did. I'll catch you at the next video. See you then.